The following is general advice only and should not be construed as accounting, legal, or any other professional advice. The details of your situation are fact-dependent and you are advised to seek the help of a competent professional. Hey, what's happening, everyone? Welcome back to another action-packed edition of CPA Reviewed, the official podcast of another71.com. As always, I am your humble host, Jeff Elliott, a licensed CPA in the state of Kansas by the grace of God. Happy Wednesday to you. Today is Wednesday, March 30th, 2016. On today's show, we are going to cover... The recently re- released CPA, CPA exam pass rates from the AICPA, as well as jump into your questions. We have a marathon list of questions. I have, I'm staring at 25 questions here from candidates, so we are going to go rapid fire on that and then jump into um, some k- CPA exam keywords that you need to know courtesy of ninja mcq so let's jump into it as always if you want to be on the podcast you can go to another 71.com click in the upper right hand corner click ask jeff and i will answer your question to the best of my limited ability uh in an upcoming edition of the show hopefully the next one and you can also reach me on the forum Go to another71.com, click on the CPA exam form. It is the most visited CPA exam site on the planet. And you can also find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash another71. There are over 43,000 of you there, and I answer questions on there as well. All right. So the AICPA released the CPA exam pass rates this week for Q1 as is the trend, only they release it uh, usually in the, in the um, third month of, of the quarter. So they just released it late March. And the pass rates overall are very good. Especially Q1 is normally the weakest, has the weakest pass rates of the year, typically because of, uh, well, it could be a combination of things. People are still... Um, people are still have that holiday hangover or um, they just hate life because of busy season or a combination of the two. But typically the Q1 pass rates are lower than the rest of the year. However, uh, so normally the pass rates are the strongest in Q3 of any given year and they kind of taper off in Q4, which is the second lowest of the year. However, the Q1 pass rates for 2016 were actually higher than the Q4 pass rates for 2015. And I don't really know how that could be or why that would be because the regulation content did not change, the auditing content didn't change, BEC didn't change, FAR actually added some additional content. They got rid of extraordinary items. So, but that wasn't a huge deal. It was just a huge deal for those of us with review materials <laughs> going through. I mean, you would be surprised, or you might not be surprised, or maybe you don't care. But uh, extraordinary items is all over the farm materials. So, all over the example financial statements. I have to take all of those out. So, anyway. But, uh, so I don't really know why Q1 pass rates were higher than Q4. So let's go over them for Q1. Auditing, 45%. BEC, 55%. FAR, 45%. And regulation, 48 Now, how does that compare with Q1s from previous years? I have the a five-year comparison on my website, another71.com. And I went through and made some pretty little colorful graphs. Um, And pretty colors are nice as long as you are not painting your textbook with pretty colors because highlighting is a waste of your time and your life. Take notes instead. little public service announcement. Auditing. Uh, We'll go 2012 on up. So auditing, 
45 percent in 2012 45 percent in 2013 and again these are q1 2014 47 percent to 2015 and 2016 45 percent so from 2012 to 2016 for auditing we had 45 45 47 45 45 so pretty consistently in the 45 range so no big deal there. BEC, 2012 to 2016. Again, these are Q1. 49, 53, 53, 53, 55. And BEC is the only section that is consistently above 50. FAR, 2012 to 2016 for Q1. 44, 47, 44, 44, 45. So FAR is up. So both BEC and FAR are up. Auditing is consistently in the 45. What about reg? 45, 48, 49, 48, 49, 48, 49, 48, 48. So about the same. So nicely done for FAR and BEC, higher than that of last year. The other sections are the same. So, all right, jumping into your questions. And again, you can ask, if you have a question for the podcast, you can go to another71.com, click in the upper right-hand corner, ask Jeff, and I will try to fit it in. Um, the questions, I'm going to read them as verbatim as possible. My answers are going to be rapid fire for purposes of just listenability. So, here we go. Quran says, I need, I need to take far regulation and auditing before the before the end of April. I know I could have planned better. What's the what, what can I do to pass these three parts? Uh <laughs> pray. <laughs> okay. Mm. Okay. Well, the easy the easy answer is I don't think it's possible, but that's but you already knew that. So how can we do this? Okay, uh, let's assume that you cannot take any time off from work. And about the only way to do it is to really spend just 10 days on each exam, like no break, no life, no weekends. If you're not at work, or commuting, or have a fork in your hand because you're throwing down some food real quick, then you are studying. And you, it doesn't say if you've, if you start from scratch, so I'm gonna assume that you're, that you are starting from scratch. Um, you don't have time for videos. Uh, it probably, it would probably benefit you. So. I'm just going to assume that you have ninja materials. I don't know if you do, but I can only think through uh, using ninja materials. Um, and plus, ninja, ninja materials in this instance are really the only type of product um, other than like someone's cram, but those are still like 20 hours. So I think ninja materials are the only materials that would work in this instance. So um, so yeah, far regulation and auditing, I would, I would read the ninja notes as many times, so start on far, read the ninja notes like as many times as you can, just at every spare moment, if you're not working ninja MCQ, then you're reading ninja notes. And do that for 10 days, and you need to like, just do so many ninja MCQs that you hate life, you hate me, you hate the word ninja, you hate your laptop, and then do some more. The only, only, only way to not to make this happen is to do intensive, nonstop, multiple choice questions, and every spare moment, reading ninja notes. You need to like, uh, you know, change the have a friend change the password to Facebook. Don't read. Don't check your personal email. Like you're just you you are unavailable for the next month. That's really the only way to do it and it's not advisable but whatever your circumstances are if you have to do it it's the only way to do it ben says i scored a 74 on regulation should i should i consider a score appeal absolutely not it won't work you just need to 
um, study again, start, start from scratch, and study everything that you did and do everything that you did to get your 74 on reg regulation. I think people take issue sometimes with me saying reg or odd. <laughs> AUD, it's odd, right? It's, I've, I've always said it as odd, auditing, odd. But someone made fun of me for, for it. So anyway, but that's just how I say it. So reg. Um, and um, there are a few areas that you are weak on. To score that 74, you need to hit those really hard. Do everything that you did to score the 74 plus those weak areas and hit those really hard and then go in and take your exam. Oh, a, score, a score appeal is a waste of your time and your money. Crystal writes in, I will, I will be graduating on May 12th. Congratulations, Crystal. I'm taking an auditing class and an international econ class with finals on May 4th and 5th. I have a proposed schedule for my exams and I wanted to get your input. If I schedule my first exam for the end of May, second for mid-July, third for end of August, and last for mid-October, do you think this is feasible or too aggressive? I plan on ordering your 10-point combo this week to start preparing. Uh, everything sounds awesome, except for taking an exam at the end of May. And only you know if that's realistic, Crystal, because... I can see you graduating and then just kind of taking a week off to enjoy life, which you've earned. So what if we moved that end of May exam to the middle of, you know what, I was gonna say the middle of June, but June's a blackout month and they don't have, they don't have exams in June except they just came out and said that they are, uh, I believe it's through June 10th, you can schedule an exam. So we move it back to, the, to, to June 10th because they extended the testing window. That's the other bit of news I forgot to mention. They extended the testing window. So you can go to another71.com and I believe it's in the forum. I think it's sticky in the forum or anyway. But go to your ProMagic Web, go to the Prometric website, try to schedule an exam for early June, like June, June 9th or June 10th. And that's what I would do. Don't take it at the end of May. Give yourself a week to enjoy life and it won't, it won't affect the rest of your, your study schedule, but uh, not the end of May. Do it like June 10th or so. Congratulations again. But everything else sounds great. I like that timetable. Jordan says, I recently listened to your survivor's guide to the CPA exam. It was an informative listen, and if I'm being honest, a gut check in my motivation and degree thereof. I currently have Becker, which my job paid for and runs out in July. I need to pass all four parts with having only set for FAR and making a 63. It really hit home that you said if you're making a 74, you aren't one point away from passing. At this time... Um, at this time, I'm commuting roughly an hour and a half each day and made use of your chapter of your chapter one audio notes. So he's referring to the demos, um, which you can get at another71.com. Click the free, the free stuff and put in your email address and you will get uh, free chapters of the notes and audio and all that good stuff. All right, end of that commercial. I like your honest, ad I like your advice on what materials you offer and what may work for me. So, okay. Well, you scored a 63 on FAR, and it sounds like you probably are not studying enough, so that's the first issue that we have to deal with. How can you, how can you fit 20 hours of studying in a week? And if you wanna get the combo, that's, <laughs> that's what I recommend, but I'm biased, and so, um, but I mean, if you're gonna use Ninja as a full course, as a substitute for a course, get the combo because it has the extra things like the, the audio and the notes. Um, if you're not going to get the combo and you are just going to, because the audio and the notes help you to be more efficient with your study time, if you're not going to get that and, um, and you wanna spend the minimum amount of money, then get the Ninja book and the Ninja MCQ. But for what you get with the combo, it's the better option. But yeah, get the combo and, I mean, you know this, 
you need to study more and you need to be more disciplined about about how to fit 20 hours of studying in a week. Ash says, I failed I failed twice with regulation with a weaker simulation but a stronger in my multiple cho- multiple choice. I want to know the best way to get at least a, com- a comparable 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 <laughs> in Sims. I'm slowly earning the English language as I uh, do each podcast, so please bear with me. So I get a, a comparable in Sims, which would help me to pass reg. Please advise. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of those of those score reports because I don't really think they tell you much. So you're, you're, weaker, you're weaker in simulations, stronger in Sims, and yeah, that's indicative of something. But like, how do you get better in simulations? Well, you need to know how to how to do simulations. But you could you could study ten different simulations over ten different topics, and get maybe one of them on the exam. And so, I mean, you you know what your bread and butter simulation topics are probably probably going to be because you know tax is tax. So you know you have your corporate tax, individual tax. So. Um, you know, definitely be strong on your on your individual sims. But <clears throat> I always say that the best way to to do to be stronger in simulations is to be stronger in the multiple choice questions because these the simulations are. Uh, and by the way, my my voice cracks sometimes as I do the <laughs> podcast, so <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, the perils of being thirty eight, I guess. Um, the the simulations are just an application of the knowledge that you of the of the concepts that you learn when you do the multiple choice questions. So um, I don't think I don't think you can just study simulations and get get appreciably better at them. Um, so the bottom line is you are weak conceptually in some areas of your multiple choice questions, and there's a few areas like is it is it um, Property is it property transactions? Well, like like kind of exchanges. Well, you you really need to hit that hard. And are you struggling with with basis? So property contribute to a corporation. Do you know those in in and out? You have to know those. So I'm not sure if I really told you anything that you didn't know, other than. Practicing a bunch of simulations is not the way to get stronger in simulations. I mean, yeah, you'll get a little bit stronger, but really, you're you need to hit the, the concepts a lot harder. Eve says, "I have I have questions on whether to take the CPA exam in total since I got my BEC scores of 73, 74, FAR of 67, 74, auditing of 70 and 7." Auditing, auditing of 70 and regulation of 71. The past year has been a real torture. I use Ninja um, auditing FAR and BEC, and I'm about a 50 to 70 percent pass rate. So Eve means the trending score in Ninja MCQ. I don't know whether to continue to take the exam since I'm working in risk consulting at Big Four, or if I'm not suitable for this. Um, well. So you're, you're trending 50 to 70 percent. So you're you're trending in a failing score, and so all that means, Eve, is that you just need to keep working the questions and keep keep hammering away at the concepts until you get that trending score up in the mid 80s. Yeah, you're you're definitely um, suitable for this because the Big Four hired you and. Your grades were obviously good enough to get into Big Four, and your grades combined with your people skills. So yeah, it's just a matter of just working harder, and and you're scoring 50 to 70 percent trending score in Ninja MCQ. Get that up to the mid 80s. Hit the review phase if possible, and once you've done that on each on each exam, go in and take your exam. 73 and 74 and BEC, you're cl- so 74 and BEC, you're close. 74 and FAR, you're close. 70 in auditing, 71 in regulation. Yeah, they, these are failing scores, but they're not that bad. I mean, I see people with scoring, you know, in the 50s and sending me emails. You're you're there. I mean, like, 
this is very doable. You just need to study a little harder and that's it. Don't make the mistake on BEC and FAR that since you're so close with the 74 that you're just one quote point away, you're not. You need to start over, but just hit it hard, study harder, and don't go and take your exam until you're scoring in the mid 80s of your training score, and then go in and take it. And then I believe you'll find success. You are cut out for this Eve, I promise. Michelle says, I need some advice on my direction with my CPA exam. I took FAR in January, February window and got a 73. The area I was weak in was my multiple choice and did not surprise me since I was only able to get through a third of the ninja test questions and was trending at 69. I am currently studying for auditing and I'm scheduled to take auditing April 30th. My question is, should I jump back into FAR for the next two to four weeks and retake that exam in April or continue with my auditing study plan and retake FAR after April? I started auditing at the beginning of March. Uh, Finish, finish auditing, take it at the end of April, jump back into FAR, maybe take it at the end of May, early June, since they extended the window. Yes, do not re, do not start over or do not jump back into FAR because you are going to have to study it from scratch anyway. Finish strong on auditing, then back to FAR. Cassie writes, first off, I'm not studying to become a CPA. My beloved sister is. However, I have extensive experience with studying for long and difficult licensing exams. I'm desperate to help her study and pass. She's failed FAR auditing and regulation by 10 or more points and is now studying for BEC. She, she took the Becker prep course, listens to lectures from another source that I can't remember the name right now. <laughs> Takes practice, it must not be Ninja. Takes practice tests and mostly studies pre-written note cards. I found that studying with a partner helped keep me focused, but since I have no experience in accounting, I'm worried that I will just waste her time with advice and doesn't relate to her study needs. I am fully prepared to spend the time learning the study prep material as if I were taking the exams myself. I was wondering if you had any advice for me as a study partner for her. Cassie, you're awesome. You are an awesome sister. Um, I would not. I would not be. I would not try to study um, along with her for the exam. However, she. If you want to be her coach and if you want to be the one that calls her calls her at 5.30 in the morning, say, hey, get your butt out of bed, let's go. Or better yet, if you want to be the one showing up showing up with coffee at 5.45, hey, let's go. It's almost like you guys are going to the gym together. And if you want to be, be there and physically be next to her while she's studying, keep her company, and maybe you want to study for something yourself or take on some and learn something alongside her, but just be almost like an accountability partner and just be physically present. That is the best gift that you could, um, I said my voice cracks. I, that's the best gift my or that you could have, um, that you could give to your sister. Jay says, I'm currently using the Becker review course and I'm wanting to purchase some more multiple choice along with, along with the simulations for regulation, auditing, and BEC. I recently failed BEC with a 72. And it's wondering if my course truly prepares me to tackle the exam. I did all of their multiple choice questions. My question is, uh, do the Becker multiple choice questions and the Ninja MCQs overlap? And if so, by how much? Uh, both companies license their questions from the AICPA. Um, I'm assuming that's the case. Um, and um, so yes, there will be some overlap. The difference will be in the technology. Ninja uses different technology. Ninja has um, adaptive learning and the features. So with each question, I have no idea how many questions Becker has. Um, Ninja has a ton of questions and Sims over 6,500. If, but on each question, there is the question and answer and the answer explanation as well as the relevant keywords that you need to know, which um, definitely help on the on the essays. Um, the authoritative literature citations, not that those help you that much because you don't wanna go look those up, that's a waste of your time. But they also have um, the, um, to further reinforce the concepts, it has a text blurb that puts the concept into context. So, and I believe it's, very affordable. So, and you can go to another71.com and read 
people who have used both used Becker in conjunction with Ninja MTQ, lots of them on there. Mark says, how many questions are contained with your regulation audio MCQs? Is this number the entire number? Are you adding multiple choice questions? I'm planning to take regulation mid-April and far at the end of May. Uh, each, so the audio MCQs, each is a full it's a full practice exam, so 90 multiple choice questions. And so right now, there is one audio MCQ for each exam, and I am currently working on the second edition, so which will be a second separate exam, and it will be coming out soon. So so 90 multiple choice questions, and it's again, it's a, it's a full practice exam. Loan on Facebook, and again, you can go to another71.com uh, forward slash Facebook, or wait, that's so the backwards, facebook.com slash another 71. And the benefit of doing that is not only it lets everyone know that you uh, that you like a pretty cool website, <laughs> and uh, it lets everyone know that you're studying for the CPA exam, and also a lot of times study tips. And so you have a goal, and it's to pass the CPA exam. Of anything that could pop into your timeline that could tangibly benefit your life and make your life better, I would argue that right now at this phase in your life, if you were taking the CPA exam, another71.com uh, status updates are the most relevant thing that could ever appear in your timeline. Because passing the exam will, in theory, cause you to make more money. Uh, unless <laughs> unless there's some multi-level opportunities that are popping up in your timeline, you know, you know, you have you have the friends that are a part of like a multi-level deal, and like they're the most. <laughs> they're always taking pictures of what they ate for breakfast, and and some some powdered drink. <clears throat> Man, it's like I need some water. Some powdered drink um, that they just got a shipment of, and you can buy it too, and it's the best thing ever. Anyway, you might make some money doing that. But <laughs> I doubt it, but uh, uh, another seventy-one dot com status updates are the best thing for your Facebook timeline. So make sure that you like another71.com on Facebook and um, get the messages in your newsfeed. So all that to say, Loan says, quick question, section 179 clarified by IRS in 2015 is uh, 500,000 slash 2 million. So $500,000 deduction with a threshold Phase out threshold of two million, but Ninja Material is using twenty five thousand dollar deduction with a two hundred thousand dollar threshold. Which one is right currently? Uh, the IRS is correct if you're preparing a tax return. Ninja is correct if you're taking the CPA exam because the one seventy nine was retroactively uh, passed by Congress, but the CPA exam tests tax law based on the enactment date or the effective date, whichever is later. And so uh, all of that, so that is a fancy way of saying any tax law updates will not be tested until mid-year. So Ninja is correct for purposes of the CPA exam. Francis says, in Ninja MCQ, are the simulations broken out by topic? Yes, I have a list of all of the simulations and the topics that they pertain to. Yes, absolutely. John says, what is the complete package versus the 10-point combo? Uh, the complete package is just the four 10-point combos lumped together and discounted. I said I'm going rapid fire. I was a little slow out of the gate, and I'm just trying to speed up here. Ashley says, Jeff, I'm still studying for FAR. Halfway through and planning to use the Ninja Test Bank. My question is when should I start <clears throat> doing the multiple choice questions? When I'm done with, when I'm done with all the material, Halfway or close to finish? Just some more background about me. I'm a non-accounting major and I'm not doing any, any accounting related work either. If you're going to use Ninja MCQ, you need to fit that in in the N-I-N-J-A, the Ninja framework, and it's the second N, the N-I-N, which is non-stop multiple choice questions. So first, you nail the concepts either in your book or your videos or whatever they are, and you take crazy notes. So nail the concepts, take intense notes. So after you've gotten through your book, after you've gotten through all of your videos and you've taken notes, then you jump into the multiple choice questions, nonstop MCQ, and that is where 
the Ninja MCQ comes into play. So after you've watched your videos and you've put them back up on the shelf, either literally or figuratively speaking, and your book, same thing with your book, it's gone, you're never gonna open it again. Instead you have this notepad full of notes. Now you jump into to the Ninja MCQ and now you start doing those and taking notes over those. That's how that fits in there. Sean says, I'm currently trying to beat the 2017 CPA exam changes and get all my exams done before then. However, I don't have my master's yet, AKA the extra 30 credits. I need to take my, I need to make my CPA official. So if I pass all my exams before the exam changes in 2017, will I do, will I need to do anything to make my CPA official other than the 30 credits? Or are there going to be any major changes for the next year? Okay. Um, as far as state specific licensing thing goes, things go, I don't know anything about those because every state is different and they're constantly changing and I don't monitor those. And uh, my best advice for any state licensing question is to contact the state board directly. Only they can help you. As far as, uh, well, uh, NASBA AICPA came out and said, if you pass some sections in 2016 or 2015, and then you pass a section two in 2017, it all, it all, it's all the same. So if you pass two in 2016 and pass two in 2017, it's the same thing. As far as the 18, I mean, you have to just pass a combination of them within the 18 month window. And the 2017 changes, um, yeah, if, if, if you see my rap video on Facebook, <laughs> It's it's intended to be more it's intended to be more entertaining than anything. But yeah, it is going to change, and yeah, the pass rates are going to drop significantly. I'm guessing, and because they always do, because it's just a change. People people aren't used to it, and eventually the pass rates will come back. But yes, it will be a change. But everyone else has to take it at the same time, and so I hope that's helpful. Bailey says I'm getting ready to apply for the exam and I have no idea where to begin. I'm more of a hands-on learner. Do you have any suggestions for study courses? I have a hard time retaining information if all I'm doing is listening and reading materials. Also, I was thinking of trying to get to two sections in my first window, FAR and BEC. I have a little one at home and work full time, so I will be studying as much as possible in my free moments. Do you have a good timeline for someone as busy as me? Um, you know, I'll try to take a section at the beginning of the window and at the end of the window. So that's what I would do. That's cool. If you're a hands-on learner, that means that you like to work multiple choice questions more than just staring at a book. Um, I think it's, I think it's still good to kind of scan through a book, but, um, if you want to, so I guess um, th there's a lot of courses out there. If you if you really are a hands-on learner and learn by doing questions, then I'm biased, but objectively I think there's no other course better than Ninja because of the price point and the fact that it's centered around the multiple choice questions. So um, in your downtime, I would still listen to the Ninja audio and Ninja notes and read the Ninja notes and I would scan through the book too. But you don't have to, you don't have to uh, hunker down and read it. But I would still scan it, I would still read. I mean, I think there's a lot of information. So if, if you apply the 80-20 uh, principle, which says that 80% uh, of the benefits come from 20% of the efforts. So 80% of the traffic in your town is on 20% of the roads. 80% of the work in your office place is done by 20% of the people. 80% of the drama is from 20% of the people. Then you then you take uh, an 80-20 view of 80-20 and you have 95-5. 95% 5. Um, 95 of the work in your office place is done by 5% of the people. 95% of the problems and drama and complaints come from 5% of the people. 95% of the information in the Ninja book is from 5% of the pages. And those 5% could very well be the pages that have um, explanation or like um, example problems. So you might want to scan through that. <laughs> so a little lesson in 80-20.
a surprisingly number, few number of people could actually explain the 80-20 principle. It's also called the Pareto principle. But um, uh, if you understand the 80-20 principle, it can, you know, it's an awesome thing, especially uh, in how you um, treat <clears throat> your your workload, your clients. So ninety, so well, eighty percent of your company's client or eighty percent of your company's revenue comes from twenty percent of your company's clients. But yet we treat all of the clients the same. If we get rid of like the drama, the drama clients that don't pay money anyway. And really serve our our um, the 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 twenty percent really well, and then drill down, serve that five percent well. Ninety five percent of your company's revenue comes from five percent of the clients. So anyway, <clears throat> got off on a tangent there. Got to love some eighty twenty. However, Kristen says I'm on my third retake for far or for auditing. This is the first exam I took, and I think my nerves got the best of me. I scored a 63. The second time, I increased my score to a 71 with the help of Ninja Notes. Now I'm on try three about the 10-point combo, and I've been focusing my study efforts on the Ninja MCQ. I'm about eight days from taking my exam. I have an average score of 85% for the multiple choice. My trending is higher because I rework the questions I got wrong until I get them right. I'm nervous about the Sims because it seems to be my weak spot. Do you think I am prepared? What can I do to cram over the next week? Uh, read the Ninja Notes nonstop. Keep working the Ninja MCQ. And uh, yeah, your your trending score might be elevated a little bit because you're, re, you're reworking the questions that you got wrong until you get them right. But that's okay. At least you, in theory, you're learning those questions. You're not just memorizing them. But you are on the right track. Keep hammering away. Lakeel writes in, I have an old edition of Becker, 2003 of their book, 2013 to be exact. I just purchased your MCQ for BEC. I was wondering if you think I should purchase your book as well to go along with the questions or can I get away with my old book? Thank you. Well, if you were taking any section other than BEC and you asked me if you could use a 2013 book, I would say absolutely not. However, there are people who might be listening to this podcast who would say, I used my old 2013-2014 BEC book, had no problems. So people do pass using older books for BEC because of all the exam sections, BEC is not, BEC is the least um, prone to changes due to regulations or law changes or new pronouncements. I mean, BEC is a lot of old school concepts, uh, economics, cost accounting, stuff like that. And so if you have an older BEC book to teach you the concepts, it's probably okay. I'm always going to say you should use up-to-date materials. Now, um, what I would do in practice if I were in your shoes might be something entirely different. so while it's always best to use updated materials, I would say it's up to you whether or not you want to use your 2013 book. If you told me it was for regulation, financial, or auditing, I'd say absolutely not. BEC, it's up to you. Just know that the best practice is always to use updated materials. Um, but you will have to make that judgment call. But definitely use um, an updated, updated MCQ software. Hope that answers that question. (laughs) Rich says, hey Jeff, I've been at this CPA pursuit for a while now. My issue is that I don't think I have enough discipline or drive to accomplish it. I do believe I can do it, but I've just fallen short in the past. Accounting isn't really a passion of mine, which might be the reason for a lack of drive to get my CPA. However, I've always wanted to have one because I might as well since I'm doing accounting work. Another reason I believe that I may not be that driven is that I'm very comfortable in my current situation. I'm sure if I lost my job and needed a CPA to get a new one or to make myself more marketable, I would go after it with guns a-blazing. I put the pursuit on CPA on hold for about three years now, and for whatever reason, I have the urge to pursue it again. Here's the other thing. I'm a single guy that is currently dating and hoping to find someone special to marry. Is it possible for me to juggle both the single life and dating, which I don't want to sacrifice or put on hold any longer, with the study needed to pass the CPA exam? If so, how do you advise I go about 
possibly making that work. All right. Uh, Rich, you ask an awesome, two very awesome questions because um, I can identify with at least one of them in that uh, when I was studying for the exam, I was like, ugh, man, this kind of sucks. <laughs> um, do I really like accounting? I don't know. I mean, and uh, so accounting wasn't a passion of mine either. And so, so consequently, I just kind of farted around, that's a technical term, uh, with the exam for a while before my wife said, hey, let's either uh, do or do not. There is no try. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. And then I passed. Uh, and But I had to make the transition to like study my butt off. And, and so uh, for you, getting your CPA certificate, CPA license, will be a feather in your cap for your resume, for marketability, and it'll probably be a pretty big self-esteem boost because, hey, this is a, t this is a tough exam and it's a, it's a real accomplishment if you pass it. And so um, while you know debits and credits and, and, you, and you couldn't care less about corporate AMT, well, most of us also could not care less about it. Um, but you know what? Making money, being more marketable, having a better life, being able to um, save for the future, being able to f you know, afford uh, vacations and pay cash for them for you and your family, if you, you and your future family, um, you are passionate about that. And passing the CPA exam is a means to help uh, make that more of a reality. And so let that be your passion. Now, don't start studying unless you are going to be um, rigorous and disciplined. <clears throat> so let's say that you're not passionate about running, but you decide that you're going to, that you're going to run a marathon. Well, uh, <laughs> you're either going to have to get the passion and enjoy it, or you're going to have to get the discipline. And chances are it's going to be the latter. <clears throat> so don't start until you really are truly going at it with guns ablazing, like you said. <clears throat> the second thing, um, I can make a case that studying while single is tougher than studying while married because with a few notable exceptions that have appeared in my inbox, uh, most of the time your spouse is going to put up with your studying, assuming that you don't fart around like I was. Again, a technical term. <clears throat> um, a... Uh, a girlfriend slash future spouse slash spousal candidate <laughs> might not be as apt to putting a year of their life on hold unless you're a really cool dude, <laughs> which I'm sure you are, but <clears throat> unless they're already convinced that you're the one. And so uh, if you are going to tackle studying and um, dating, then what I would say <clears throat> is get all of your studying in in the, mo in the weekday mornings, in the weekday evenings, and at lunchtime, and do less studying on the weekends and make yourself available on the weekends. And like maybe one night, like a Thursday night for Netflix night or whatever. <clears throat> now, if, uh, if the future Mrs. Rich, <laughs> which is kind of funny to say, Mrs. Rich, um, can't can't handle being apart for you on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings, then there's a problem. Especially if you've communicated that this is a goal for you. Okay, and so. There has to be a little give and take on both ends. So on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you are studying your butt off till midnight and you're getting up at 5.30 to study some more so that on Wednesday, on, on Thursday nights, you can have Netflix night until 10 and then start studying from 10 to midnight. And then and then Friday and Saturday night, Saturday night you're off and you're, <clears throat> and you're cool guy rich and rich the dating guy. Sunday night, like, you know, you, you have... You have your weekend, but your weekend ends Sunday at 7 p.m. and you're studying from 7 to midnight. 
Okay, so if you can do that, then yes, you can have you can have a dating life. <laughs> you have my permission to have a dating life and study for the CPA exam. Catherine says hi. So I used your MCQs studying for reg with barely a month before the exam and I passed. Yay! Now I would like to take auditing, but it's busy season. I have auditing and far left and BEC expires in September. I need advice on this situation. Okay, so take auditing at the end of May and take far in July. Giving you an extra testing window to take auditing in, in July or auditing in August if you need to. And <clears throat> time for another retake early September if you have to. Uh, of course, that won't work because you can only take one section, take a section once per testing window. So July, August, and September are all one window. So really, you really have to. Really, you should try to take both exams in each testing window. So take auditing in FAR in April and May, giving you some breathing room for July and August. So that's how I do it. Chris says, I realize you must get this question a lot, but I wanted to get your feedback. I have FAR scheduled for the May 7th. I've been reading the book, and it's, time, and it's taking me a lot longer than expected to get through everything as fast as possible. On page 150 out of 1,000, Okay, I'm using the Wiley CPA Excel review software. I work 50 hours a week at a CPA firm. I want your insight on what Ninja material you recommend purchasing to supplement my review for FAR and help me get through reading the material efficiently. I'm sorry if I sound stupid. Any help is appreciated. Yeah, well, that's not a stupid question at all. So your book is a thousand pages. And uh, let's see here. Let me... So the, the Ninja book for FAR is about 650 pages, which is a 35% reduction. If you study, if you study, um, so 1,000 pages, if you can read 50 pages of your CPA review book a day, which is a lot um, for that dry and technical of, of material, 50 pages a day, that's it's going to take you 20 days of reading just the book. And if I give you a 35% reduction by switching to the Ninja book, that is a seven-day reduction. Um, and I know I'm not a human calculator. I actually hit pause on the podcast and <laughs> did the calculator. <laughs> so I just saved you a week of your life and a week of, of seven days straight misery uh, studying for FAR just by switching to the Ninja book. So number one, you can do that. So uh, and number two, and if you want to use Ninja MCQ in conjunction with your software, um, you know, you can use your current CPA Excel software as your as your base, and then use Ninja MCQ for like your two week final review. So, <clears throat> I saved you a week of your time by switching to the Ninja book. You just got to buy it, and Ninja MCQ as your review. The biggest takeaway there is Ninja book will save you a week of study time simply by switching to it because it has 35% less material, but it's just as robust. Mish writes in, Hi Jeff, I'm currently not enrolled for the CPA program, but I'm going to. I graduated two years ago from the Bachelor of Commerce degree specializing in accounting. The problem is I feel like I don't remember anything from school. I, I also was the type of student who memorized what was needed to pass and didn't take the effort to fully understand the concepts, which I regret. Do you have any advice on what I can do now before I enroll? reread university textbooks or some CPA review classes. I also work full time, so I don't want to enroll until I have a good foundation. Mish, good news, jump into your CPA review program. Don't memorize the stuff, so <clears throat> any program that's heavy on mnemonics, you might wanna rethink that. Read the material, watch the videos. If you're gonna use a video course or Ninja, if you're gonna use Ninja, like just read the book, work through it, Work the multiple choice questions. Don't memorize the answers. You will be fine. I tell people that if they understand the difference between a debit and a credit, the CPA review course can pick up the slack. I had one industry person scoff at that. <laughs> Apparently, that's blasphemy. So, um, but like, you don't have to have like this crazy super this crazy foundation. I mean, um, okay, so. Uh, 
I would, I would venture to say the average the average person graduating from from their from their their university program like they're jumping into the CPA exam a couple years down the road. So how much do they remember? Well, unless they use a unless unless they like work in governmental accounting and and um, and uh, remember the opening and closing entries to to a period with your which with your uh, budgetary fund balance and all that stuff like who remembers that <laughs> well that's what your cpa review course is there to do and um so i think you'll be just fine if you slow down and dig into the material i wouldn't start reading textbooks just jump into the material and if, if you use ninja you will know if you're ready for the exam because you're trending in the mid 80s prior like as you're heading to your exam like if you're if you're trending in the 60s well you need to take some more time and reschedule that exam if you're trending in the mid 80s and you've done a ton of questions you are very close to being ready john says hi jeff i'm preparing to take my first exam in july 2016 and have chosen bec what is the best way to take notes from the ninja book well you're going to uh you know it's kind of tough to take to take notes from a book because when you when you pay thousands of dollars for a review course and they open the book, like you're paying them thousands of dollars to tell you what to take notes from because they're literally going through the book and either reading it to you or they're saying, um, write this down, write this down, write this down. So, you know, Ninja Book, BEC, uh, take like the second, like BEC or the uh, e econ chapter. You have chapter one. Section A, components of the business cycle, subsection one, subsection two. So subsection two has the business cycle phases, expansion, peak, contraction, and trough. You should probably write like a little blurb about what each one of those are or just, or just draw, you know, <clears throat> draw it, um, draw the different phases. And just, just go through on each page. If there's stuff that's bold, just definitions, just jot them down little thoughts on each on each well not on each page but on on throughout the book there's multiple choice questions that are added in as application questions if it's some little curveball like write down what the little nugget is what the curveball is and just get this working set of notes that so i guess the thesis of taking notes is on each page like summarize it in and, and like one or two bullet points, like what's important on each page, or just or just some pages you might not write any bullet points. Some pages you might have three bullet points, but just go through and try to and try to summarize what each section is saying. Put it in your own words, and then also on your multiple choice questions, and um, you can really take notes over multiple choice questions because as you as you miss a question. Write down what the concept is that you didn't understand or what the little curveball was. Devin says, I'm currently on module two, management accounting, and I'm not even close to beginning the CPA exam. I'm curious, are Ninja materials worth using to help pass the individual modules? I figured if I'm going to study as if I was taking the CPA exam, surely the modules would feel like a breeze. So I'm going to interpret that as if Okay, either either you're you're going through CPA exam materials and you're going to take the exam someday, or you're in college and um, taking university classes and want to know if Ninja Materials will work for that. I'm going to assume that you're asking the latter. So, can you use Ninja Materials in college? If you're listening to the podcast, you're like, no, dummy. He's asking. He's taking the exam. But okay, sorry about that. If I am a dummy. Um, can you use Ninja Materials for your college classes? Yes, because okay, you you're, you're taking manage, you're taking managerial accounting in school, and your professor. So you, you go buy this like this five thousand dollar textbook from the bookstore, and the professor lectures a little bit over it and says, "Man," eh, and then read page one through fifty tomorrow or whatever. Well, um, that is a very inefficient way of learning. You can jump into Ninja MCQ and like really master um, managerial accounting just by working the software. So unless they have some custom software for you to use, yeah. And um, 
you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't buy like the Ninja Notes and Ninja Audio for for college class, but Ninja MCQ, yeah, I probably would. If I could do college over, which <laughs> I don't think my parents want me to do college over. <clears throat> um, lots of memories. Jay says, and final question, Jay from Facebook. Hi Jeff, I'm at the non-stop MCQ phase of studying. Should I do MCQs for one chapter at a time or mixtures of the chapters? I'm taking regulation in April. I'm a big fan of doing one section or one subsection at a time versus, I mean, so in Ninja MCQ you have two options. Like just drill down by section and work a section over like individual tax or corporate tax or subchapter S tax or just let the just do a global um, session and let the exam throw, you know, agency law, corporate tax, estate tax at you, contract law. If if you are in like review mode, then do the latter, but I would drill down if you're in learning mode. So do them one section at a time. Okay, well that was 25 questions. Thank you everyone for sending in your questions. Please, if, if you want to be at a future edition of the podcast, go to another71.com. Click in the upper right-hand corner, click Ask Jeff, and I will include it in a future edition of the podcast. Or you can hit me up on Facebook. If you want some free CPA exam materials, go to another71.com. Click on the free study, the free study downloads. I have free full chapters of Ninja Book, Ninja Audio, Ninja Notes, um, you know, Ninja MCQ Audio. So that's that is that is well worth your time. Even if you never ever buy anything from me, <laughs> doing that one thing is well worth your time. Thank you everyone for listening and be good. Take care and I will talk to you soon.